A couple of weeks ago, I did a couple of videos talking about running Triglavian vessels through various different wormhole or JSpace combat sites, and one of the most common questions that was asked was, what about the Ikitursa? Like, seriously, I put out videos about the Dracovac and the Kikimura, and all everyone seemed to care about was, what about the Ikatursa? So, you know what, here we are today, we're going to be taking a look at the Ikatursa, which is the Triglavian Collective's Heavy Assault Cruiser. And, as I've mentioned before, Heavy Assault Cruisers are absolutely one of my favourite classes of vessel in EVE Online. I really enjoy this type of ship, so surely the Ikatursa should be right up there as one of those ships that I really enjoy flying. Right? Well, ultimately, I took it out through a load of C3 ratting sites, I gave it a really good spin, and in this video, I'm going to be showcasing my findings. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi, and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Triglavian Collective's heavy assault cruiser, the Ikatursa. I love the visuals of this ship. Like, I've talked a lot about how the Triglavian ships I think are some of the best looking in the game by far. Genuinely, I think they're really cool. And this one really stands out amongst them as my absolute favourite. It's right up there with the Kikimura and the Draugr. It just looks incredible. It looks, I think someone mentioned, like something out of Doom 2016. And it's definitely got the right colour scheme. It's definitely got that sort of glowing effect in the middle of it. It is just one badass looking ship. Now, I've mentioned in previous videos talking about the Triglavian Collective ships that they're named after Slavic or Finnish folklore. In this case, the Ikatursa is seemingly based on Finnish folklore, with the Iku Torso, which I hope I'm pronouncing right, being some kind of giant sea monster that I believe appears in the Kalevala, which is a big part of Finnish uh, uh, mythology. Obviously, we have the Kalevala Expanse as well in EVE Online, but that's unrelated to the the Ikatursa. It's just a different name. Anyway, I'm going off topic here. So yeah, the Ikatursa is named after the Ikuturso, which is some kind of great sea monster in the Kalevala Finnish mythology, and I really think it lives up to its name, something that swims through the depths of space and brings great destruction upon anything it finds. Yeah, sign me the hell up. Cool looking ship. Love the way the Entropic Disintegrators look here as well. These floating spheres like something out of, I don't know. I can't think of what a sci-fi film it is I'm thinking of off the top of my head. Little, possibly Event Horizon? I don't know. Anyway, badass looking ship. Really cool. We're going to be taking it through a couple of C3 anomalies. I'm going to showcase the fit that I'm using and then showcase it in action. Without further ado though, if you do enjoy this video, please take a brief second just to hit like. Subscribe if you haven't already for all things EVE Online, specifically with a slanting towards abyssal dead spaces and wormholing um, and drop a comment down below as well as to what you think of this video or any of my others let me know about the fit what ships you're enjoying flying helps the channel out massively just to hit like just to drop a comment Beyond that, if you do want to go the extra mile to support content like this, you can head to my PayPal tip jar, my Patreon page where you can pledge to support, and my Redbubble merchandise store where you can get some exclusive Captain Benzi EVE Online themed swag. And finally, if you're new to EVE Online and looking to get started, first of all, click my referral link in the description for 1 million free skill points, then come join the Catskull Discord where there's a bunch of like-minded pilots happy to help you out in any way they can. All that said and done then, let's talk about the Triglavian Collective's Ikatursa Heavy Assault Cruiser. Heavy Assault Cruisers are my second favourite class of vessel in EVE Online, right behind the Strategic Cruisers. I really like these, but for some reason I still only have Heavy Assault Cruiser trained to 4. I do recommend obviously getting that to 5 if this is the kind of vessel you're going to be flying a lot of. It's a skill I really should be working on getting to 5 as soon as possible, because I'm flying a lot of Heavy Assault Cruisers these days. Anyway, so bear that in mind that when we go through, I'm only at Heavy Assault Cruiser 4, and that is sufficient for the fit that I'm going to be showcasing but we should theoretically want to get that to 5 ASAP. Now, the Heavy Assault Cruiser skill, in addition to its usual bonuses, gives the Ikatursa a 20% bonus to Heavy Entropic Disintegrator Maximum Damage Multiplier bonus. This basically means, remember, Entropic Disintegrators, when you're shooting at a target, as long as you are still locked onto the same target and still targeting that one thing uninterrupted, the DPS increases, the Entropic Disintegrators spool up. It doesn't matter whether you hit or miss, just as long as you are targeting and actively engaging the same 
target. If you change ship, the DPS will reset, even if you change back to the previous one. So the aim is to basically start shooting at something until it dies, then move on to the next thing and then keep going and it'll ramp up. Now that 20% bonus per level, 80% uh, for the skills I have, 100% bonus at full uh, training of the Heavy Assault Cruiser skill, that increases that maximum damage multiplier bonus by, uh, again, 80 or 100%. This means it ramps up faster and it ramps up higher quicker. That is always going to be a good thing. It means you can start applying more DPS to a target sooner in a fight. We then get a 7.5% bonus to the Heavy Entropic Disintegrator maximum range. Again, for me, that's only a 30% increase. Um, if you train that up to the full 5, it's 37.5% increase. That's worth it, because these can have some really annoying ranges due to how in Heavy Entropic Disintegrators work. There's no fall off, it is pure optimal range. You are in range, or you're not in range. It's that simple. Kind of like missiles, um, but dealing the damage instantly without the travel time that missiles have. Anyway, we're not here to talk about missiles and application things. We're here to talk about the Ikatursa. Precursor, cruiser, this you're going to actually have to have trained up to five anyway to even undock the Ikatursa. So we're just going to treat this as if you've got Precursor Cruiser 5, because you will by the time you undock this. That's going to give you a 25% bonus to heavy entropic disintegrated damage. That is both the starting DPS and the high point of the maximum DPS that you can go to. Very, very nice. More damage, always a good thing. And a 5% bonus to heavy entropic disintegrator tracking speed. Now, heavy entropic disintegrators don't have the best tracking. So certainly this is a skill that is really beneficial to the Ikatursa, and I do recommend having motion prediction trained up at least to four in your gunnery skills, probably to five, just to get the absolute maximum out of this vessel. We then have some roll bonuses that I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. A 100% bonus to remote armor repair at range, doubling the remote range of any remote armor repairers. That twins nicely with a 50% reduced remote armor repair capacity need. Now we're running a solo fit here, so we're not going to use remote armor repairers because we've got no use for them. But if you are running a small gang of Triglavian ships for PvP or PvE, both are very popular, then you can spider tank them. Basically, you each have remote armor repairers fitted and you repair the guy to your right and he repairs the guy to his right and then they repair you if there's three of you going sort of thing. Each of you repairs one other person in sort of a circle in order to help keep you alive because remote armor repairers actually do better and more capacity stable armor repairing than a local armor repairer would. Worth mentioning, but not useful for this particular video or fit. 50% reduced smart bomb capacity need, same kind of thing going on there. Um, this is not really beneficial to our, our particular fit that we're using. Again, in PvP can be useful for taking out drones, but for the most part, we're going to ignore that. Then a 50% reduced energy neutralizer capacity need. Again, very much a PvP skill because you cannot nuke rats. Well, I mean, you can apply the nuke, but it won't do anything. Um, useful for PvP, not so much for what we're showcasing here. The final part is the ability to fit assault damage controls. Now, this is something we'll mention a little bit later. I'm not going to do a dive here into what an assault damage control is, because we're not actually going to be using one on this particular ship. In short, essentially, it's like a damage control unit in that having it fitted passively increases your shield, armor, and hull resistances, but you can also activate it for a short period of time to get a massive increase to your resistances for a short duration with a long cooldown. Anyway, that's the Ikatursa as a ship. Let's look at the Ikatursa as a fit. So first things first, we need our high slot. With a uh, Ikatursa, we are of course going to use a heavy entropic disintegrator. Now I go for, for the Velesh personally. Um, you can just go straight in for the Tech 2 versions. Obviously the Tech 2 versions require a little bit more training. You're gonna need to have medium precursor weapon um, trained up to five before you can use the heavy entropic disintegrator twos. Whereas the Velesh heavy entropic disintegrator can be used basically with base skills. Um, once you have Tech 2 ammo, you can still keep using the Velesh, um, and it will run those quite nicely. Technically better to go for the, uh, the, the Tech 2 versions if you can, but I'm going to be showcasing it here with a Velesh because it's what I had running around and it helps keep the cost down just that little bit. Now you can see with Occult ammunition fitted, we have an optimal range of 18 kilometers. There is no way to extend that. Fall off is not a thing on these ships, so don't worry about that. It is straight up in range or not in range. And remember, this spools up with time. 
Our other high slots, I've gone for a core probe launcher just to scan down a wormhole exit if we need to find one, along with small energy Nosferatu 2s in the top slots here, just to help keep up the, uh, the capacitor while we're running these sites. We are going to be getting muted quite heavily. The capacitor on this ship isn't fantastic. We do need a way to keep our capacitor alive to the best of our ability. Which is why in the mid slots, we've got two Republic Fleet large cap batteries, or sorry, rather, one Republic Fleet large cap battery and one Thucker medium cap battery. This can be either way around. You could go a Thucker large and a Republic Fleet medium, or hey, you could go two Republic Fleets or two Thucker. One, uh, one large, one medium, just to keep up that capacitor stability to the best of our ability. I've then got a Federation Navy Stasis Webifier. This is just going to help us reduce the speed of any of the frigates that we go up against. Doesn't have to be Federation Navy. I've gone for that because I like the 14 kilometer range, but a standard uh, Stasis Webifier 2 will do the job. Full propulsion, 10 Mega Newton Afterburner 2 is more than enough for us to move around comfortably. 670.41 meters per second. Don't use an afterburner, it mutes your cap out yourself. Uh, you will just cap yourself out trying to run a, a micro warp drive, and we can essentially speed tank with this quite comfortably. For the low slots on the subject of tanking, we've got a multi-spectrum energized membrane giving us some nice over-the-board resistances, a reactive armor hardener, which I need to do a video on directly. Essentially, as you take damage, this looks at where you're taking the most damage and plugs those holes. So the more damage you take from, say, electromagnetic, the more it resists electromagnetic. Absolutely incredible in sleeper sites. Absolutely strongly recommended. Um, in fact, I would use that over a standard DCU or even a multi-spectrum if you've only got one one slot to go for the reactive first, then at the multi-spectrum. The actual tank is two medium armor repairers twos, and um, we only tend to have one of these active at once, which actually gives us remarkable capacitor stability up here, um, but you can activate the second one if you need to, and then you can overheat if you really need to. And then finally, for the low slots, two entropic radiation sinks, just to keep up that DPS. We're starting at 457.9 DPS. That will increase rapidly the longer that we are shooting at a target. For the rigs then, because I can see the cluster shutdown happening at the top here, of course this would happen while I'm trying to record. For the rigs then, medium nanobot accelerator 2s and a medium auxiliary nanopump 2. This is just to give you even more armor repairer and help your tank out. If I go to armor repair right here, you'll see we're getting 115 HP per second from our two armor repairers running. If we just have one of those running, it's 57.5. That should be more than enough for the most part. That will keep you alive quite comfortably. You're you're fairly fast, you're fairly small, you're not going to be actually taking all that much damage from the hits, but it's nice to have something to repair up what you do take. Drones, ultimately we've got 50 megabits per second here, so we're going to go for 5 medium drones. I tend to just go for Hobgoblin 2s, but you can kind of use whatever mix you fancy, whatever you've got trained basically, especially if you've got a particular preference when it comes to the specialization skills. It's kind of pointless running, say, Vespa 2s if you've got no points, no skills in Kaldari drone specialization, but you've got a full 5 in Galente drone specialization, at which point, obviously, use Hobgoblins. Not Hobgoblins, whatever the Tech 2 ones are. Hammerheads. Hammerheads, that's the one we're talking about. Not Tech 2, medium. God, that cluster shutdown is really messing with my head. Anyway, yeah, so use medium drones, five medium drones, whatever suits you best. Remember, sleepers obviously have Omni Resist, so we just don't care. So let's showcase this in a Fortification Frontier Stronghold, everyone's favourite C3 combat anomaly, or at least my favourite C3 combat anomaly. I like these ones, they're quick, they're easy, um, and ultimately the reason I showcase all of these ships in the same combat anomaly is so that you can watch this video, then you can watch any of my other C3 combat anomaly videos and you'll see the same site and see how the fit compares directly. So, having warped into the site, we double-click in any direction just to get moving so that we've got a little bit of angular going. We are then going to activate the afterburner. We're going to activate one of the armor repairers. You'll see I warped into a site earlier that someone else had already over-triggered. Um, wave two and a half of wave one had already spawned, so I kind of warped out of there quickly, moved into this site, dropped my mobile tractor unit. We are bookmarking the mobile tractor unit because we are good children, and that is what we must do. Seriously, it's like bookmarking the exit to your wormhole. Bookmark your MTUs. I've had so many people go, oh, I lost my MTU, I had to warp out of the site and I couldn't get back to it. Yeah, now you see. Anyway, here you kind of see a little thing on the Ekaterso. You may have just noticed it there that those sort of wings on the side just opened up like a petal. I love how animated the Ekaterso is and I kind of wish I knew what caused it to do that because it'll open up and close down and change all these different things. It doesn't appear to be necessarily what it's shooting with or shooting at. 
it, I don't know why it does it, but I love it. Anyway, here we are now going after the Emergent Defender. In this first wave, the Emergent uh, the emergent Defenders are just frigates. They don't do anything particularly nasty. They've just got webs. We then have two Awakened Defenders, which are DPS cruisers. They're not at all a threat either, and we don't really have to worry about those. You'll see I've got my Nosferatu set up just to try and keep my... Uh, my capacitor a little bit higher. I've spent ages there trying to shoot that Emergent Defender. You'll see I haven't been able to hit it because it is a frigate, they're small, they're fast moving, and the tracking on the Velash isn't great. Now that I've got a web of fire on it, we are starting to do damage. But remember, whilst I've been shooting at it, even though I've been missing, that heavy entropic disintegrator has been spooling up. Even though I've been missing, it's been increasing in its DPS, which means now that it's finally hitting the target, it's at a pretty high DPS like number, and therefore it's going to be you know chomping through that quite quickly as you saw obviously the second we change target to like this awakened defender now that has reset that spool so we're back to the low dps value and we're just going to have to start climbing up again I also forgot to launch my drones early on. I'm using Republic Fleet Valkyries. They were essentially what I had handy. Republic Fleet Valkyries are the fastest moving but lowest like lowest damage of the medium drones. Um, I like the fast moving because it means that they can shoot out at the frigates and handle those nice and easily. Also means if I get jumped, they come back to my hold quickly, but they're not as much DPS as perhaps, say, uh, Hammerhead 2s would be or uh, Federation Navy Hammerheads or whatever you want to use there. It is kind of up to you which drones you use. You'll find that they all work pretty well um, in these anomalies. Anyway, there goes the first Awakened Defender. Our Velesh Heavy Entropic Disintegrator Spool has now reset back to its base DPS. We're going after that Awakened Defender now. Um, once we get within range of it, because I'm using a Cult M, and a Cult M is fairly short range by comparison, um, about 16.8 16 kilometers, I think it is. Either way, there, we are now within range, so we can start spooling up. Now, of course, I am spamming D scan, and I'm watching D scan closely, but. I also know from comms what I'm expecting in the local area. So there are certain names that are going to appear on D-Scan that I'm just like, yeah, I know who that is. I'm perfectly safe with the current situation. This is the wonderful thing about having friends or a wormhole corp. You can have eyes and ears on all of the holes and exits around you so you can see what's going on and you know whether or not you're safe, whether there are hostiles moving in your system or nearby systems. It's well worth recommending, and if you are looking for a wormhole incorporation, well, Cat Skull's always recruiting. Come join our Discord. Shameless self promotion. Anyway, we're going to set there our orbit to 15 kilometers just because ultimately orbiting at five, the tracking's not really keeping up with it. It's getting a lot of different stuff. There we are, some nice wrecks and that. Wave two spawns, two upholders, two defenders. Defenders again, combat cruisers, no real problem. Upholders, problem. These are the little gits that like to orbit at 30 kilometers, staying out of range of most weapons that you might be using. Um, they also use newts and webs. Finally, just to make them even more annoying, they are the trigger for wave three. So we can't kill both of them. We definitely want to kill one of them because having one web and one newt on us is better than having two webs and two newts, but we can't kill both of them. I've also got to get a little bit closer to this so that I can actually start shooting at the blasted thing. My drones are already in there and engaging, but I need to be a little bit closer to start getting the mystic. And again, look at the Ikaterta. It's just folded up and I don't know why. Maybe it's the ammo type that it uses? Maybe? I don't know. Maybe someone who's watching this knows why the Ikatursa sort of unfurls or furls up, why it changes its animations like that. No, it can't be ammo type because now it's suddenly unfurling again. Maybe it is just when it starts shooting. I don't know. Maybe you can let me know if you know in the comment section down below, but otherwise we're going to be killing this Awakened Upholder first of all. I don't really like having to use the Mystic M ammo. It's longer range, but it's a lot lower DPS. But again, being able to kill something with low DPS is better than not being able to kill it with high DPS because you can't even hit the blasted thing. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, though, Awakened Upholder down onto the Awakened Defender next. We're going to kill both of these, then go after the Awakened Upholder and trigger Wave 3. Or at least that's what you should be doing, except I forgot my own advice. I shot the Awakened Upholder first and triggered Wave 3 early. So now I've got all of Wave 3 having just warped in with an Awakened Defender still on grid. That's not ideal. I'm also going to take a few nice screenshots here. One of these will eventually be the thumbnail for this very video. I just Oh, there we are. You can see it folding up there. I really wish I knew why it did this. 
I, it's clearly not whether or not it's got a weapon active because it's just done that despite the fact that the weapon is active. It's not armor repairers or anything like that. I don't know why. I don't know why it does it. Someone in my comment section is gonna have to let me know why the Ikatursa furls and unfurls like that because it's gonna really annoy me. Anyway, Wave 3 has spawned in with the Awakened Defender still remaining from Wave 2. Therefore, I'm going to need to activate my second Armor Repairer because I'm taking a lot of incoming damage now. Now, when you're doing something like Armor Repairers, these should be in counter step. Activate one, then halfway through the cycle, activate the second one. This means that your capacitor doesn't take one big hit, it takes two small hits, which helps with its regeneration. And it also means rather than one big armor rep, you get two smaller ones. The total is is the same, but it means because you're repairing smaller amounts more frequently, you're less likely to hit hull in damage. Not really a threat at this point in time, but still worth knowing. Now, with that Awakened Defender from Wave 2 destroyed, we come into Wave 3 and start actually shooting at those. The Awakened Up Holder is going to be our first target. Like with Wave 2, it is a neutralizing and webifying ship. It's going to try and orbit us at 30 kilometers. We want to take it out quickly to get rid of that web and nute as quickly as possible. And there we are, the Ikatursa unfurls again, though I don't know why, and then immediately closes back up again. Why? Why do you do this? <laughs> it's just, oh, it's going to annoy me so much. It's going to annoy me so much. Anyway, that Awakened Up Holder is going to die pretty quickly at this point. They don't have much HP. You see a little bit of uh, its armor comes back up. That's because of our next target. We're now going after the Awakened Preserver. And as that name, Preserver, might suggest, this thing has remote reps. Therefore, if you're trying to shoot a battleship whilst that Preserver's alive, the Preserver is going to be repairing the battleship, and it's just going to make your, your entire journey through killing that battleship more of a slog, more arduous, because it's going to be two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back constantly. So that Awakened Preserver is our next target to take out. I'm going to start up uh, orbiting the Upholder then at 15 kilometers because that is going to be our next target once the Preserver goes down. I'll then swap to the Occult M ammo because I'll be in range of that then um, and it's higher DPS so it'll kill that battleship that little bit faster. Now, it's at this point that I really should answer the question of, is the Ikatursa worth it? That's what you came here to find out, I guess. So I need to give you an answer. If the question is, can the Ikatursa run C3s? Yes, it, it clearly can. You're watching it do it now with very little difficulty. It's nice and straightforward. Just orbit and kill in the right target order. Don't trigger the waves too early, yada, yada, yada. You know how it works. Can the Ikatursa run C3s? Yes. Is the Ikatursa your best choice for a precursor ship to do them? No for a couple of reasons. The most obvious reason is that it doesn't do it as fast as the Drekovac. The Drekovac did this site in about 12-13 minutes, whereas the Ikatursa takes about 15 to 17 minutes, depending. So it's a slightly slower ship. It's just got lower DPS, basically, so it doesn't do as much damage as quickly. It takes longer to clear the site, not as much ISK per hour. The second issue, then, is the cost of the Ikatursa. The Ikatursa is literally twice the cost of the Drekovac. It's like 400 million for the fit that I showcased in the Drekovac video. It's about 800 million for the ship that I'm showcasing here. So you're paying twice as much for a ship that doesn't do it as well as the other one? Ugh. And that then brings us to skills. If you're looking to fly an Ikatursa or a Drekovac, you're going to have medium precursor turret skills. And you're also going to have precursor cruiser skills, right? Now, the Ikatursa requires that you get Precursor Cruiser to 5, then you have to have your Heavy Assault Cruiser skill. Whereas, if you want to fly the Drekovac, you need to get Precursor Cruiser to 3, and then Precursor Battle Cruiser up. And getting Precursor Cruiser to 3 and Battle Cruiser to 4, which is what I ran in the Drekovac video, is a lot fewer skill points than getting a Cruiser to 5 and then Heavy Assault Cruiser to 4, which is what I'm running in this video. So basically, it's actually faster to get into the Drekovac, it's fewer skill points to get into the Drekovac, it's a cheaper ship, and it runs the sites quicker. So if you are looking for a medium precursor ship to run C3s and maybe do some other stuff with it as well, the Drekovac is going to be my recommendation. It's not to say the Ikatus is bad, it's not. It's working ultimately the same speed. It's doing these sites the same speed as something like the Legion or the Proteus for, again, two-thirds of their cost, so it's cheaper than either of those two. But it's just not worth it when there's another ship that uses practically the same skills right next to it on the ship tree. Like, if you like your Triglavian ships and you want to be running C3 content, the Drekovac just does it better. 
Anyway, folks, that's about all there is to say on this particular topic. Let me know what you think on this one. If you're flying in a Katursa, let me know how you fit it. Maybe it's just that my fit is utter garbage. Often that gets pointed out to me in the comment section down below. So yeah, go join in the club. Tell me what I did wrong. Otherwise, come join us on the Catskull Discord. We'd love to have a chat with you and see how you're getting on with this kind of stuff. If you're into wormholing, Catskull is always recruiting. We are a wormhole corporation, always looking for new members to join the fray. Finally, I am going to be at Fan fest this year so if you're watching this before september 2023 do let me know reach out to me i'd love to say hi to all of you folks at fan fest otherwise thanks for watching right the way through to the end happy sailing and see you in new eden